I've been asked many times to come and really show some of the different techniques that I have as far as uh, sketching or teaching people how to uh, quick sketch, especially when you're running an estimate or you're doing a hardscape or just drawing to draw. These are some things that might help you. I always do a quick sketch on the spot when I'm uh, uh, out on an estimate or I'm talking to somebody about design in their yard. And of course, it's really powerful because they can see that your vision is down on paper. You might be able to tell them about it and they go, mm, I just can't see it. But the minute that you draw it up, they go, I got it. Now that's what we want. It makes it tangible. And tangibility is what you need. So, you know, it's great. God has given us so many great gifts in order to empower us. In, 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 in the Bible, it says that he's given us the ability to create wealth in Leviticus. So let's create uh, all kinds of imagery and, and vision and all kinds of things with this. And all we got to do is apply it to this right here. I'm going to teach you a little bit about perspective, but we're going to start off by doing um, not just perspective, but uh, I'm going to go straight from perspective over to drawing an actual waterfall and show you how perspective ties into what we do there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give you a kind of a quick uh, lesson on perspective. Perspective is nothing more than convergence of lines. So what I'm going to do is do a, a line in the middle here, show you how perspective works. It's a line in the middle there. And on this line here, I'm using a triangle because it squares up with the side of the page to make sure that it's, it's level. So I use the triangle a lot. You can use a straight edge, which this table has, but I'm going to use uh, just this for a quick sketch page. Now, when I do quick sketches, I don't sit there and go do over the whole thing. I just am I'm interested in just for now to show you kind of how it works. So here's, a, let's say we draw a building or a box right here. I'm going to square it all up again. There we go, like we're here, use the triangle. I'm gonna do another one over here and show you how perspective works. This is called, right here, this is your vantage point, your line. It's the horizon line, so let's call it horizon. Horizon line right there. <clears throat> this is your vanishing point. This is the vanishing point. So everything converges to that. So right now I'm making a, a couple of boxes and uh, the boxes will converge. Right now you see just flat boxes, it's not 3D yet, but that's where your visual, that's where you're at. You're looking at it right there. So since you're up at this level here, you should be able to see the top of these boxes. So how do we do that? Very simply, we put in here uh, a line going from the box straight to here. This is all lines that are the top of the box that are converging to here. Now you also, will you see the other side of the box? You won't see that side, okay? But you'll see this side. So let's converge these lines here. Let's see. There you go. So now I think I'll stop, I could stop the box here, 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 anywhere in that. I'm gonna stop it about right there. It could be a box or we could, we could be a building either way. So now I'm gonna use the top of this, come across that way. And now you have a box, one point perspective box. When I draw a backyard, I use the, the uh, box. So here we go. There is the same thing over here. There you go, there's the boxes. Let me to make, darken this up so the camera can see it a little better. All right, so now you can see kind of what's going on there. See the, uh, the boxes are lining to that perspective point. They're all coming into there and that's what we want, okay? So now you could actually make a scene out of this. So let's stop the box right here. Now you have a building. And you bring it across the side over here and this is where we stop it. <clears throat> now these lines remain completely level to each other. This is level, 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 all, all like that. All, all, all the same. Now, when you have these lines here, they do the same exact thing. Okay. Now the only time that changes is when you have a three-point perspective, but we're not going to go over that right now. Right now, the basic one-point perspective. Okay. <clears throat> now how do I draw a hardscape off of that? Well, for now, I'm just going to draw a road coming out of here. And these lines all become parallel to each other. See how they're all parallel? Uh, this line is the exact same as that one. Okay. These lines are not parallel. They converge to the point, to the very center point called the vanishing point. And this is your horizon line. That's where the horizon is. It's also your vantage point. That means where you're at. OK. 
Okay, there you go. <clears throat> now, so let's uh, let, let's let's take the uh, the the point here and make a road. Okay, here we go. And there, I made the lines longer as you come towards you. They should be longer. How do you figure that out? I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just going to get into. Here's the line. We could have a mountain coming out of here if you want. <clears throat> we can make another mountain over here. Uh, you know, in here. And I don't have curly enough hair to sh to <clears throat> do all the happy little trees and stuff like that. But that's what my man used to do on a on TV, if you remember him, Bob. And so, but now <clears throat> I have a scene or a drawing. Everything converges into that same thing. All right. So let's get that same drawing. Let's get the same. Actually, I'll get a new page. So I'm just printing on the other one. So now, how would we draw a hardscape in a backyard? How would we do that? Well, let's see. If the house is a backyard uh, that has it, let's, let's get our let's get our point. Let's get let's get a point at the top of the head, uh, top of the uh, page there. So we'll start our vanishing point way up here. That means I'm way up high, maybe on a uh, tree level, but you can see it overhead. So let's stop the house. Let's start the end of the house about right here. And then we can draw this. There's the house there. And then uh, let's say the house, uh, the top of the house is a little bit. I'm gonna go this way with it. There we go. Now, how do I get this? I'm just kind of guessing on the roof. I'm not really doing that, but here's the house. I think I'll, I can stop the house here if I wanted to and take the house back this way. But I think not. I think it's, you know, it's just going to go. But we'll just take it like that. So how did I get those? Well, I used a point from here. And I could stop the house over here if I wanted to. Down over here, a little lower, a little lower if I wanted to. But I'm going to keep it up over here. There's the top of the house. I have to be kind of in proportion. So that's what I'm doing. So at the back of the, of the house, here's the yard. So here's the yard right here. This is the yard. So if I start the yard up higher, I have a side that gives me a side yard. If I start it up over here, then I have no side yard because it, it looked like a fence right up to it. So I'm going to start the yard over here. Then I'll get this point again and bring it down. And there's my yard. So I could make kind of a grid showing the yard. And this is the yard. Okay. So there's the yard right there. All right. Now let's say we have a door to the backyard. Well, even the door has to be perspective, right? And proportionate. So there's the door. And then we'll get this and uh, there you go. Right now, I even have windows in there. But remember, I always keep this thing level and perpendicular. Uh, vertical these ones here they converge even where the door is at that's at the back door so let's go to let's do kind of a patio that we want to put in there in design you can make the big fat patio like that I like doing curves it looks so much nicer when you do curves if I'm gonna do a water feature I would probably put it in the middle here and when I do water feature curves I go like that okay I like to do this you know kind of matching the same thing curves are always so much better they just look better there's it's just a better deal so <clears throat> Curving in your design is everything, okay? So here, I'm gonna draw a waterfall, and I'm gonna just draw an outline of a waterfall, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna stop here and go and teach you how to draw a waterfall. So here's the design, I'm gonna show the aspects of the design. In fact, I think we should have maybe a fire pit over here, and we'll, do, we'll draw a design like that into the patio. You could tie it into there, have a waterfall, maybe another bench over here. And how do you get those? Well, there again, it's perspective, okay? I would like to draw, uh, let's say I can get the bench, put it around this way, and then draw a wall like this. See there? Draw a boulder over here. There's the top of the wall. And then I'll use this to show the dimensional 3D part of the wall. As it comes to me, it's gonna be more of a planter wall. And then of course, since it's a planter, I probably won't see the top of it. Okay, so here's the planter. And uh, I'm going to probably put plants and trees. And I put pencil first, and then I put things in the foreground. So I could bring my grass around like this into that. 
And what a nice design. Look at this. So we'll, we'll come back to this design. Let's practice the waterfalls. Let's go to that if you're a hardscape uh, drawing. Uh, when I draw a waterfall, I always draw the fall first. There it is right there. So there's the fall. So I'm going to draw a waterfall kind of like what we want in the corner of that house there. So my corner would be back here like that. That's what I'm drawing. So how would we draw it? Well, remember I kind of had a, a, a kind of a kidney shape. I always like the kidney shape. I don't like a round like that. I don't like that at all. I like this round like that and bring it around like that. It just makes for a better. And I don't know how many times I teach on this. People just keep on putting round waterfall ponds in and they just don't look as good. So put your, uh, let's, let's go first. Let's say it's uh, almost a one point perspective. You have all, everything goes all into this one thing here. So I got, I draw first the water. Kind of looks like a stick or a log, uh, but and then I draw the the uh, uh, the water or the splash. Once I draw the splash, uh, depending on the kind of water, I want to kind of make it look like a, a ledge type of a rock waterfall. We build always um, with panels, and uh, some of you guys do carving and stuff like that. Either way, you can build it according to this, like this. But I like to do the rocks that look separately, that just look so much better, like that when you can invert or, or make the stuff separate, okay? At Cliff Rock and Stonemakers, we, we do the panel system, so that's we're able to do a lot of things with this. So there's your two rocks, one, two, three, four rocks, actually. The under rocks, the top, and I attach them. The water is the main thing. The water is the adornment of the rocks, okay? So as I draw water, I always draw like the reflection, just a little, just, you know, your mind just captures a little bit of that, of the, of the reflection as it ripples out. And I'm going to draw my ripples just in the same line. I'm not going to draw them like this. I draw them almost exactly in line. And I just kind of ripple it and bring it out. And then I can just, you can bring it around your pond. I can put another rock over here. And, and as I do rocks or anything I do, I always bring the, the, you can do it straight. Make sure you make sure they're straight. Not to an angle, not like this. If this thing's going to hit it, the ripple should be exactly where that thing's going to be. Okay? It should be exactly in the same with the, the water going on. A lot, a lot of times I'll draw a little circle showing that water go out like that. I like to draw trees or plantings of small ornamental trees that come out of <clears throat> the waterfall. <clears throat> How do I draw these trees? How do I do the tree? Well, I draw several trunks because when you install it, you're not going to have a big fat trunk. You want a, the spindly little uh, ornamental trees coming out of there. And then I kind of mushroom it out like that and then I just draw it like that. So if I draw a tree, I draw it uh, like this, and then I just mushroom it out. Same thing, okay? So that's what we want to keep to. And then I'm going to go ahead and ink this, because I think it's ready to ink, and we can start to, I mean, it really, uh, my rocks are going to go, the, my adornment rocks or my rocks that I use around the coping are going to go like this, in a round thing, like this. And it gives you that plane. See what I mean? It looks like it's, now it looks like a flat pond. That's what you want to get that effect of a flat pond. Even these rocks have to have a flat rock on top. How do you get that look on top? <clears throat> well, what we're going to do, we're going to make these dimensional. So first, we'll draw, remember we draw the water first. So I'm going to draw that water first. And I'm using just a regular, this is an 05, <clears throat> let's see, this is an airline drawing system. I get these at, uh, I think you can get these online. I think they got these. But, or you can go and actually buy a, uh, a product called Faber-Castell. <clears throat> these have a lot of these fade, uh, color fadings, I do a lot of black and white. Uh, I do color also, but I'm going to show you black and white. And you can really do some cool things with it. <clears throat> and they have, this is the Faber Caster. And what's nice about it is they have the, uh, they have the ink pens, same thing, same exact thing, and you can, you, you can use those. So either way, I'll show you how we're going to shade that and fade those in a minute. But right now, so here we go. We'll get back to this, and there's using the ruler or, or, or the triangle. Make sure this is level at the bottom also, okay? All right. So now we're going to draw the, the actual, the waterfall. But the waterfall, I, I want to make sure that you know that I, you start off with this. And we want that to be level. I might bring it out a little bit from here. I'm going to have the rock go right in the top of it. So now the water's having to come around and go over here. And you barely see the top of it, so you might be at this angle up in here. You see a little bit of that, okay? And you have leeway with the waterfall because, you know, waterfall, the rocks could turn and go up or down or sideways. So you're not going to be always at a perspective angle, even though you're, you're going to draw dimensional. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to kind of do some of these coming in there like that. And 
and that. And there again, we have the, the just the lines showing that the water is falling, it's kind of streaming or uh, shimmering down there. And then I'm gonna draw a little uh, one of these. That kind of a, that's what water does. It bulbs every now and then. I'll draw a few of those. <clears throat> it gives that effect. And right now, it, by itself, it looks like water streaming down. Uh, you can even widen it up a little bit because water seems to scatter as it goes down. Anyway, you can widen it up a little bit. Gives it more realism. So now I have my rock in here. And how do I make this rock 3D? Well, I'm going to draw it to the back of it. Then I'm going to bring it forward. Almost like I did the boxes. See that? <clears throat> now you have these things. Now you're kind of drawing this flat top. I'm going to bring the rocks underneath here. And the little lines of the rock. That's how you draw the, the rock going in and out. And then when you put a line like that, it gives it dimension. It gives it the boundaries as to where the rock is. It makes the rock look it's like it's a side. Well, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get a, uh, rocks have different shades. I'll get a shade like that. I'll get one like that. And I'll get like that. I don't want to draw it the same, you know, the, the, the shade the same way as the water. Then it looks like a part of the water. I will, uh, when I get the shades going, the shading going, I will come in here and uh, do a little bit of this to give it that separation in there to let it know that, uh, the, the water's deep inside the, the, the rock in between. It's kind of coming through there. And then we'll go behind it. I'll show you how we do that a little later. <clears throat> but right now, this is how you get this, okay? So at the top of here, I'm gonna bring a, a lines across to just uh, bring that thing like that into here. And then I'm gonna come across. And now I got the other side of the, the rock, okay? All right, it's getting there. We're just about there, okay? And you see how I gave dimension to the rock by not only drawing the back of it over here, but then giving this line like it's wrapping it. Like here's the rock, let me show you a line that shows that it's all the way, wrapping all the way around there, okay? So now we have a rock up here, rock down here. This one kind of comes down from here and goes this way. So where else should we go? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring one down here to give it a little dimension, okay? I'm gonna bring this across here, okay? So now you can see that it kind of, it kind of clothes the rock. So you can, these lines here kind of make clothes around the rock to give it that dimension. It's like if something was invisible, but all of a sudden you put a, 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 a robe over it or a towel over it, all of a sudden it gives it dimension, okay? and it makes it tangible. So that's kind of what we're doing. So here, I'm gonna bring this in here like this. And now I have the inside and I can actually make it, I don't wanna make it too cave, I can make, bring the rock a little further in. And now you have kind of a cave behind that rock. I can even bring this in here, but unless I have, I'll, I'll bring, now however, wherever I bring, if I bring my, my bottom of my rock over here, then this water will only look like it's barely coming over. If I bring the back of this right over here, now the water looks like it's like this this overhang looks way over it brings it over two three feet instead of uh just streaming along down the, the, the bottom of that so now i'm going to bring this up here we'll darken it as we go down and then i'm going to give dimension to this rock i'm going to bring it all the way across here up like this across and then there yeah, that gives it dimension there and now i'm coming up with this bring it over I'm, I'm going to adorn the back of the waterfall with uh, vegetation. So I'm going to do trees. Come in here. And how I draw the trees is I'll, I'll bring a line up like this. And I'll sketch it, sketch it, bring it down. I, look, I make almost a, like, like a, just a squibble or a squirrel as it comes down. And that's kind of the lines in between there. Because bark has so many different aspects and design and lines to it. <clears throat> so as you can see here. And then I'll get the grays and I'll, I'll tighten those up here. Now at the bottom of it, I'm gonna draw a scribble. How did I run, learn how to draw that? Well, what I do is I, I draw scribbles like that. And that's what the scribble of a pattern, like that is what really makes kind of the, uh, the trees. So I'm gonna draw the, the tree coming over the rock like that. It gives it dimension. The rock looked like it's part, it's kind of leaning over the branches. 
<clears throat> I'm going to bring it across over here. And again, we want to keep that mushroom effect on trees. Trees will come up and then they'll come back over with another layer. Uh, and you can bring the branch through if you want. And then what I'll do is I'll tighten up the rest of that. I'll tighten the rest of that. And then I'll get a shadow and I'll go like this. And I'll use my other pins to kind of shadow it. But right now, that little, <clears throat> that ink right there really makes a big difference. I'll bring the other side. There's the other tree. And then I'll draw below and underneath these branches and do the same exact thing. Bring that across there. And there it is. There's the tree. Then I'm going to thin it out to give it more of a, so it doesn't look like a globe. And then I'm going to finish it up at the top. Not a big tree. We're not going to go crazy. But just a, you know, something like that. So that's an adorning tree. Tighten it up over here. Maybe bring a branch through. And then I'm going to go... Same thing with the, the outside of that right there. So here we are. And we'll shadow a lot of this here. Here where I have two, one rock to the other, I'll bring black in there and just kind of fade it out. And now it shows how the rock is over the top of it. Now I need to bring some rocks that are coming towards me and I'm going to do the one in the front here which is in the foreground. Foreground meaning that it's here close to you more than further apart okay. So here we go it's coming around. I'm going to bring this level almost remember it because it's going to come around this way. Instead of leaning this line down it'll look like it's falling. I want it to bring it level and then cut in like that. Then I'll bring this one around like this same thing and cut around like that. Now these lines here, I'm going to be, make rocks out of them because I like the rocks to be the not only the adornment but also to be the the uh, 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 the coping. The coping is going to come across here. And we're going to bring that coping across here and across in here. Each rock is its own dimension, but it also gives the dimension of the pond. Okay. Now again, I said this: if you if you take the water all the way across in here. So now is uh, I'm probably going to bring the dimension of this down. I'm left-handed, so I always cover the page, so it's difficult for me. And I try. That's why I'm trying to get an overhead view of this whole thing here. So so I might bring this back over here a little bit more. I'm going to bring this rock down here. Bring that rock up in there. And there I bring the ripple across. See, I brought that. Now it gives that effect and it makes it look like there's water there. Okay, so when I said quick sketching, how long is this taking me? Well, right now, <laughs> it's probably taking me well over five minutes, 10 minutes. So let's try to get a little bit quicker on this thing here. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the rock over here. I'm gonna kind of pie it out to there. Bring the rest of the rock here. And then I'm gonna give the rock dimension. How I do that? Remember, you can't see this side of the rock. You can see that side because you're looking at it from here. So over here, you'll be able to see that, kind of take it in a little bit. And then we'll, we'll get dark markers to actually go in the crevices of these and really uh, make them come to life or give depth. And now with the, with the depth, it makes them come to life. So here, there's the back of that rock. That's what I mean by the shadow. And then I, I'll draw a couple of lines across here like that to give it, you know, and then I'll use the darker markers a little later. I think I'll put a plant behind here. <clears throat> kind of give some background in there. Because if I had a waterfall, you want planting all over it. Because water is the source. It brings life. And so that's what we want there. Okay. So here we go. Now, once we have the waterfall, I want to bring rocks to the other side because this is bringing rocks down here. Okay, so. Okay. This could come in here. Now, as I scatter the, the lines here, you, you, one thing about it, you always want to be level. I want the I want these lines to be level even though they're because that's what you're looking at the water level like that if you make it go down like that it doesn't it, the, the ripple the ripple you're picking up is the level part of the water even if you look at the ocean you can see the ripples they're always level okay they're not all they're not horizontal they're not uh, vertical they're always just a, a you know they're, they're completely I, I would say horizontal they are horizontal 
they are horizontal and they come across this way so let's bring the rock now the further I bring this rock down like this I can actually give depth see if I bring this over here like this it brings the, the waterfall back so I'm gonna bring remember the, the further you bring this bottom line here it makes the waterfall come back right now it's hanging over over here so the rock goes way behind it and then it comes out over here So now that the water's coming back this way, we're gonna stop it right there. I'm gonna bring this around and give the rock dimension. Bring it over here. I think I'll make a nice big flat rock in here, like this. Like that, see there? And then I can bring this down. This line here should not have been there, but uh, it's all right, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll bring it down there like that and bring this rock over and above, I can bring a rock in front of this. Shouldn't have really made this line, should have made that out of uh, uh, just pen and pencil so it doesn't you know, stick there, but I, I can bring the dimension back up. Okay. Okay. Over here and bring the rest of these rocks here. You know, being left-handed, I always cover the page, so it's kind of difficult to catch what I'm doing sometimes. So, over here you can see I'm bringing the pond all the way around. Now the pond has dimension; it has uh, kind of purpose. You can see where it's going around. Okay. So now I kind of just did this, the, the, the rippling of the water, some of this, uh, the rock coming down, reflection of the rock coming down. Now real, let's set it off, okay? Let's really set it off and we can do that by, and you can usually uh, do the eraser marks on this in here, but I'm just gonna uh, hit my, my grays and everything on this thing almost immediately, okay? Uh, since I'm doing that waterfall there, I'm probably gonna bring a, another flagstone patio up to it. But let's finish off just the waterfall itself. I think we have enough to work with right there. And now I'm going to use uh, the dark pins, and I'll use some shadow pins in here, you know, just to come in. I think I'll use, let's use the, let's go with the dark first. And what we're going to do is going to go in here and get all this stuff back in here, really bring that water straight out like that. And now that this comes out like here, these lines, you can you don't have to go all the way with them, but you can just kind of, look how it just brings the waterfall out like this. I can even use more of uh, uh, the reflection in here like this. I can even do this here. I can bring some of that reflection just a little darker in there. Don't get too crazy with this stuff. And now when I'm doing the bottom of the pond, I always bring this, this, if I bring it here, it's always underneath. That's that shadow underneath the pond. And then I'll bring it in between here, maybe. And then I'll bring it over here in between this, and then maybe across over here a little bit in here. As you can see, these dark the dark really brings out the the light of the rocks and everything. And just look at look how it just made it so sharp in here. I think I'll bring some dark in. Now I'm going to do a different fade, and this is a little bit lighter of a pin, as you can see, and it still has a dark side to it, as far as the uh, uh, it's still a dark shade, but it's not as dark. Okay, it's not as bad. Otherwise, the other stuff is just straight black. This one here is kind of a a dark gray, and I'm going to cover just areas like this, cover back under here, and then I'm going to let, let that also. If I'm going to bring a dark gray in here, I'm also going to bring a, a, a reflection. So if I bring a thing right there, let the reflection come out there too. So now you see the reflection coming in there. If I do this rock here, we make a dark rock or a, a shade of it like that. I'm also going to bring it into the water. So you see how the water shades all the way down. If you have a shade on the, on the rock, you should bring it into the water. There you go. Shade over here, bring it into the water.
If you have a shade come over here, bring it into the water. There we go, see there? Look at that, just brings it right into the water, same thing. And, and, and now we'll give it more dimension by bringing a lot of these things in here, in between here, the back of this. So now I'm gonna add a uh, more of a lighter uh, color which comes over it. And here it goes right here, see this? The lighter color kind of fades it together, brings it over here. And I'm gonna start bringing this in here because this has the lighter color, so I'm gonna bring it here. A little bit over here, bring it back down in. Really cool how you get the, even though you have the rock over here, it brings right down in here. And then I'll just, uh, I'll fade some of these rocks in here. Okay. There we go. Now it's starting to really come alive. Uh, I can even bring this over here like this, and there, comes right into the water. Now it's got dimension and everything. I can even shadow this over here. You know, I can do a little here, maybe a little bit on the tree, even off of, uh, off of the, what I thought was gonna shadow. Look at that, really coming together. I'll even do the water, see a little bit of the water. A little bit of that, you know, look at that. Now I give a little bit of this dimension to this by just adding color. And it's not even a color, it's kind of a gray. So this is all grayscale. But the gray, grayscale really looks good on drawings and shadows and stuff like that. You can actually throw the shadows of the waterfall back in here. Let's say the lights on this side. We can shadow all this right here. And then shadow it against this rock or shadow it against this rock here. And that way it shows this, this, this is uh, the sun's maybe on that side showing the shadowed side, which is right in here. And I can do that all in here. Uh, let's see over here, a little bit over here, a little bit on the ground here. There we go. And now, you have a water feature. It's uh, it's fairly nice, and you can you can use that. That is what this is the water feature that we're going to put into this right here. So that waterfall right there is the waterfall we want to build. So we're going to finish our design on the next episode of of uh, drawing and uh, learning how to draw, learning how to do the design of hardscape quick sketching. Uh, uh, this is a finished picture that we're going to put into uh, this picture over here. So this is going to be that waterfall right there right here is going to be this one here so that's how we did the quick sketch and on the next one we'll implement other ideas into our hardscape design well on the next episode we will have a complete drawing of not only uh, this waterfall that we did here but we will start adding on like the fire pits and how we draw the design of fire pits and other sketching that you're going to do we're also going to do a continual uh, a series of all kinds of different kinds of waterfalls, whether it be into a swimming pool or it be into uh, different effects that you'd like. So we're going to try all kinds of different things and really teach you how to sketch. And, and the more different types of designs that we have, we will show you how we do perspective in it, how I get my idea for it, not only design, but, the, but how to bring it from here to your hands so you can quick sketch it. So until next time, I'll see you again.